Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today I decided to do a more of a, a kind of an informal video. I just want to kind of play with things I have. Um, a year ago, Softflex had a kit that was really beautiful and it had this beautiful German glass. Uh, I can show you the rest of the kit is this one. Now, I don't remember what it's called, but I did a video and if I find it, I'll link it right here so you can watch it if you want. But I really did not use this at all and it made me kind of upset in a way because I do like using my stuff and it's giving me you know I'm coming up to the conclusion that maybe I need to buy a lot less uh, you know kits and stuff and personal beads and just try to use what I have because I have a lot of beautiful beautiful stuff and I have a lot of like artisan stuff and I just kind of want to start playing with it more uh, with the things I have whether they're in kits and mix them up with other things because I'm really enjoying it and I've been really like uh, into making simpler designs more streamlined designs where the beads become the start of the show rather than the design itself like no complicated stuff just pretty much stringing so I was thinking about just going ahead and making a necklace I know in the kit there was this uh, beautiful leaf and this beautiful German glass um German glass um uh, I forget what they're called, beads, twisted beads. Um, and uh, I know that this came from the Jesse J mix that, you know, the box had. And they had this beautiful, also transparent kind of green. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, so I wanted to play with that. I have a little bit of my soft flex in fluorite left over. And I thought, why not make a, make a necklace with this that is front fastening uh, and just uh, it fastens at the front and maybe just string some beads and see how it goes. So um, I don't have a perfect plan here. I'm just going to go on the fly. Uh, I also have some three millimeter leftover beads. And I was thinking about using some of these in parts of the necklace and maybe uh, some seed beads. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I think my plan is to start stringing uh, these beads and kind of in an even uh, mode. So I'm going to separate them. At first, I thought about doing it completely even, but I think I'm just going to kind of mix them up and just, you know, separate them in two. And then the rest I'll do with these or something like that. So let's see how that works. So I've already changed my plan and I knew that that would happen. Uh, so I set five beads aside because I want to make a matching bracelet. And I think I want to use, you know, just uh, five on each side or one, two, three, four, five on each side that are uh, you know, sort of a graduated color, uh, I guess, you know, so I decided to do it this way. So um, let's see, I'm just going to start stringing and see how it goes. And I'm going to put one of these. And then I already had like a bead, uh, bead bug over here. So I can actually stop. Uh, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some on this side and then continue with other beads. And I'm going to put these on the other side. It's a front fastening necklace. So we're, I'm going to do the whole necklace first, the whole stringing. And then I'm going to connect it later to this clasp. So I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, kind of do it. And then you can see and I'll speed it up. So now I'm going to continue with these beads and I think I want to continue with maybe some copper or bronze. Uh, let me go uh, get my seed beads and decide. Okay, so I got some seed beads here, I have some 8 and 11 O's. Um, these are in Muscat and these are, t uh, these are Miyuki, these are Toho. Um, I forget the color, saffron. This is a very bright copper and I'm looking at it and I think I'm going to put this one to the side because I don't think it quite goes. My instinct says to actually use some uh, bronze, so instead of the copper, because I feel like, I don't know, it just goes better or something. And uh, I think the 8 O's are like a little bigger than I like, so I'm going to stick to the 11 O's. So I'm going to just start stringing and uh, I'm just going to put some music on and you guys hopefully can enjoy. Okay, and once again, I changed my mind. As you can see, I changed my mind quite a bit. And I was thinking about adding also these before I actually add these just to give a little bit more length and to give a little bit more texture. Uh, I almost like maybe these like that instead. Instead of using four, I'll just use two. 
And I think I also have two of those. I don't know. There's a glow to these beads that I really love. So I just want to use these. So I'm just going to keep stringing once again. It might change again. This is how I work, guys. Until I find that sweet spot, I just change things out a lot. So I went ahead and strung all of these beads. Um, I kind of skipped a little bit ahead and recorded some parts, but I just wanted to, you guys to explain what I did. Um, I pretty much spaced out these with some um, fire polish beads. Then I used some 11-0 uh, seed beads to just space the rest out. Um, and um, uh, I also added three more here and three more here because I want to be able to, you know, fasten this clasp, make sure that this goes through. And I also put three beads between each of these to make it a little bit longer because I felt like I didn't have enough beads to make it all the way to the end. So now at this point, I'm just going to um, take these and just make basically uh, two loops and just crimp them. So let's let's do that together. I've done it a lot of times, but you know, it's never a bad thing to watch it again. Okay, so I slid on two copper crimp beads and then I'm just gonna loop and just Pull it through. These are a little bit shorter because I had very little, um, very little wire left. So it's a little bit harder when you don't have a long wire to do this, but you can still do it. So what I usually do, I just try to start looping it and then I take my, uh, sorry, I keep getting the wrong pliers, but the chain nose plier and I just try to grab the end and I try to pull it if I can. So I'm doing that there, I'm pulling like right there and then I'm gonna take my crimp beads and I'm going to do my usual I'm gonna go on this first notch and I'm just gonna make I'm just gonna put it in the first notch right there and I'm just gonna squeeze it doesn't have to be too hard make sure you don't get the glass sometimes you can get the glass right now I'm getting it so in this first one doesn't matter too much because it's a little bit easier now these crimp tubes are very hard because they are very, very sturdy because they're the ones from stop black. So you have to put a little bit more force and then you can just squeeze in the first notch to just round it up and you get a cute little tube like that. And what I want to do is go ahead and trim this and I use just trim it to the very, um, very flush to the tube that I just put on. And it might be difficult to do, but you just really go close and just clip. Then you can slide everything down and make sure that you have enough. Don't don't scrunch it up too much because if you scrunch it up too much, then it want the necklace won't move and you don't want that. You want movement. So I already got my crimp on there. I put it before and I'm going to do the same thing. Now this one is going to be a little bit harder because, you know, it's usually harder to do the next one. But you just kind of push push it through. And do the same thing. You just get your chain nose pliers and kind of pull it through just like that. And then you should have something that is the similar size to that one. Now I made mine very small because I'm going to use jump rings. I always prefer to use jump rings because if anything breaks, like the clasp breaks, it's easy to change. Now, if you loop it directly on the uh, thread or on the uh, wire, if anything breaks, uh, as far as the clasp goes, then you'd have to redo the whole necklace. And we don't, we want to try not to do that because it's a lot of work. And then we're going to get our crimping tools and we're going to do it again. We're going to squeeze in the first notch and then we're going to bring it to the first notch right here at the front and then just squeeze again to just kind of round it up. And then we have a tube basically. And then we're going to do the same thing and we're going to clip it just like we did before. And try to keep it as flush as possible. Now it looks like I left a little bit of space, but that's good. You do want a little bit of space because you want the necklace to move. You don't want it to scrunch up. Otherwise, if it scrunches up, it doesn't look too good. So make sure that you leave a little tiny little space so that the necklace can move. It is soft flex and it flexes. 
But if you put it too scrunched up, then it won't move. And you don't want that in a necklace. So that's pretty much our necklace part. And now the fun part comes, which is the front clasp. We're just going to go ahead and add it. And then we're going to do our decoration. Okay, now I'm going to add the clasp but with jump rings. At this point, it doesn't really matter because, you know, there's no front or back to this. So you can do it any ways you want. But um, we've done this before. This one is already an open jump ring. So I'm just going to show you with the open jump ring. If you have jump rings that are open, that's great. If not, I'll show you how to open one and close it. Uh, but yeah, you're just going to take part of the clasp and you're going to use this jump ring. This is a five millimeter copper jump ring. And then you're going to take this one and hold it. Get your chain nose pliers, flat nose pliers, and chain nose pliers. And then you just want to make a meet. Now I'm just going to show you basically to open a jump rings. You never pull it apart. You always want to just open it this way. Just like this. Or like that. That's how you open it. You don't want to do it too many times because you stress the metal. So you just take that and I'll put the other part of my clasp, the T side of the clasp. Now this is a Tierra cast clasp. This was a part of a kit. So everything that came in here was a kit. So I'm trying to use as much of this kit as I can. Uh, with the exception of the seed beads, of course, and these spacer beads that I've used, which are also check. And then the wire, I think originally was the Jasper color, which is more of a brown, orange, but I decided to use the fluoride, which is more of a green, because these are more of a fluoride green and I wanted them to stay transparent and not show through. So I didn't want the wire to show through. So there you go. You actually have a necklace made if you want it, like even to fasten it just like that and just keep it simple. But we're going to go the extra miles today and we're going to have a little fun. Uh, I want to use this... Um, this one, it looks like this one got a little bit oxidized over time. I have two of these. I have another one from a different kit that I'll show later that is more recent, possibly. If I have time, I'll try to make something out of that one. Uh, you could just go ahead and just attach it with the jump ring. But I think I want to either wire wrap it with this um, little thing. But before I do that, I actually want to try to paint this. Um, so I'm going to try to paint this. So uh, meet me back and I'll clean up a little bit around here and we'll just paint together. Okay, I thought it would be fun to just kind of paint this leaf. Um, I have here the necklace as a reference and I cleaned up the leaf a little bit because it's very tarnished. I mean, I don't mind tarnished copper, but uh, I did want it to be a little bit cleaner for the paint to hopefully stick. Now, if I don't like this, I can always wash it out. What I'm going to use today uh, are these uh, paints called Ultimate Paints from Colorful Soul. I just got these, I think, like last month or the month before um, on vintage sites, I believe. And uh, I think I got some on Vintage sites and some on the Soft Flat site, but um, I have several colors. I thought it would be fun to really uh, just, you know, have fun painting. I love painting. Uh, I haven't painted on metal in a while, so I don't know if this is going to turn out right. But I would like to kind of stick to these colors that I see here. Uh, these are very bright, so I think to tone them down, I'm going to try to use the opposite color maybe a little bit. Like for the green and the red, uh, I can definitely tone these down a little bit. Now for the yellow, it might be a little bit more difficult. So we're going to have to do some mixing. So I'm going to shake these like as much as possible to mix them up. So just spend some time shaking them. Okay, I've shaken them quite a bit. Hopefully it's enough. I always feel like it's never enough. And also what I'm going to use, I think, is these um, colorful sole um, tips that I got. Some of them are a little bit dirty. But as you see, it just come, kind of comes off. These are silicone tips. Uh, you don't have to buy these. I just picked up the paints and I thought I'll just pick up the brushes too. Uh, but the great thing about these is that, you know, they don't need that much cleanup like real brushes do. Sometimes real brushes, they're harder to clean with these colors, but these come right off. So I think I'm just going to start with this. Um, I kind of want to do a sort of an ombre. So maybe I'll start just like we did with the necklace with the yellow and the orange. So I'm going to see if I can start with maybe some yellow. And I think I want to do more of a wash. So I'm going to experiment with, uh, I'm going to drip a little bit on there. This one dries really quickly. However, I'm thinking maybe if I use a little bit of, you know, water and just kind of add some water, I can shear it out a little bit and just maybe use it more of a wash. I haven't tried this, guys, so bear with me. This is me trying things and just trying to have some fun. So I just kind of want to use sort of a wash of colors at the tip. I think that would be really fun. 
and just kind of let it dry. I can always add more paint later. So I'm just going to start with that and then I'm going to add a little bit of orange right there on the side right here. And I'm going to mix. I'm going to bring some of this orange with this yellow and just kind of mix it together. So I'm making sort of a gradient or I'm trying to anyways. I don't know if this works like real paints, but I'm trying anyways because it's fun. So I just kind of want to do a wash right there. Maybe I should use the bigger brush. I don't know. I'm just going to use this because that's what I got right there. I'm just going to try to get this gradient going. So I'm just going to add some of this and maybe what I can do is just start at the back. I'm going to try to keep the stem clean if I can as much as possible. And I'm gradually going to add more orange. And of course, because I want this one to be a wash, I'm just going to keep adding water. And I think this is give, will give me more of a wash. You know, you have to kind of keep on mixing and seeing what works and what doesn't. You can always add a little bit more yellow right there to make it a little bit less strong. I think that's going to work, hopefully. I just kind of want to try to get a variegated look, kind of like a leaf turning. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're trying. And I can always rinse and just maybe add more yellow at the tip. If I wanted to be stronger, I think that would be really pretty. Another thing you could do is just, you know, polish it and just leave some of the paint showing through and some of the metal. I might try to do that, try to bring some of the metal back after I'm done. I'm just going to keep adding some color. Like right there. I'm just having fun and experimenting. I think it's always fun to just kind of try new things. They might not turn out great, but at least you can try. And then the great thing about these paints is that you can wash them too with water. If you don't like, you can scrape it off. So, all right. So far, I'm not mad at it. So now I'm going to go towards, I think, maybe the green or the red. Which one do I want to do? Uh, we're going to have to make it kind of brown at some point. So I'm going to try to do, I'm going to go ahead and drop some red right here and some green as well and see what I can come up with. guys it's been a couple of days actually because i had to interrupt this um you know piece uh, i had to go to work and i have a new job so i'm trying to get used to the new job and i haven't had much time to get back and filming i made other pieces of jewelry i'll share them later i want to start doing that uh but uh, i wanted to show you guys so this is the leaf uh I went ahead and let it dry overnight. I let it dry for a few hours and then I put a sealant that is a patina sealant from uh, uh, Ranger, I believe. I think it's the same company that makes these, the sole uh, or the vintage at least. So I went ahead, I kept the back, the back blank so it's just like that. But I really like how this turned out. I think this is really pretty. And I sealed it because I did feel like it when I scratched it, it was coming off. And this way it's not coming off. Plus it needs it, it gives it like a nice gloss. Now that we're done with that, let's just go ahead and keep making the necklace. Okay, so it would be good to just attach it. I might do that, but I was thinking about adding one more focal, like this little focal right here. So let's try to do that. Okay, I'm not the best with wire. However, I wanted to try to maybe do a herringbone with the copper wire. So I got an 18 gauge and a 24 gauge wire. Uh, I'm going to see if the 18 gauge goes through uh, here and it looks like it's not. So I might have to go. Actually, it is. So it's a very tight fit, so I'm going to take this 18 gauge and cut a piece and then straighten it out and probably start working from this one. Now, I'm not an expert 
in wire wrapping at all. <laughs> it's one of those areas of jewelry that I haven't explored much, but I'm going to try it. So let's see how it goes. So I think the first step is to straighten your wire. So try to straighten it as much as you can. I'm using these wobblers, uh, wobblers like um, nylon pliers to just kind of straighten it. I also think that straightening it up, it helps with um, hardening the metal so that you have a better base. Uh, and I'm also going to make sure uh, I like these to be as flush as possible. So I just cut them up as much as I can. You can also fight them if you don't feel like your cutters. My cutters aren't on their last ends. Uh, you've seen in other videos, I really need to get new ones. Um, on their last leg, I've used it for a long time. But um, yeah, it looks like now it fits. It was probably kinked a little bit. That's why I wasn't fitting it first. And I think I'm going to try to wrap it with some 24 gauge. I don't know how much I did, but I do need, but I'm going to try to get a fairly good amount and I'm going to try not to work hard on this one too much because I need it to be pretty soft. Um, I think 26 gauge would be also good. It's thinner, probably easier to work with, but I just got a good amount and I'm just going to start by, I saw somebody saying, try to make a loop first around the wire before you even start so that you have a straight loop. So I'm going to try to do that. Um, and I might just sacrifice a little piece. So there's a loop right there that fits. And I hope to catch this on camera, but I apologize if I don't because I'm new at this. So I'm gonna cut it on the flush cut side and uh, I'm gonna take my pliers and I'm gonna try to make sure that it meets. I'm gonna make sure that this fits though. So we don't wanna, so you just wanna make sure that the loop is really closed. So keep working on it until it's completely closed up like that. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to start trying. This is very trying for me because I haven't tried it before. So I'm going to put the bead. And what I've seen is you just kind of try to stabilize this bead and this wire and you go around, around the bead as tightly as you can. And then you wrap it around the top and behind. You know, you might have to, if you're like me at the beginning, you might have to kind of play with it. And then I'm going to go on the other side and I'm going to try to follow the curve of the bead, pushing the wire as much as I can. And then at this point, we're going to go on top of the wire where we're at, like on the first wire loop that we made. And we're going to go and wrap around it again, just like that. And then we're going to have to decide how we want this. Do we want it on top of the other wire maybe? How far do we want it out? Uh, do we want a lot of spacing between or do you want it tighter? So this one is kind of a different bead because it's not a round bead. So I'm going to try to keep it a little looser, but not too loose. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go try to go over this wire over here. And I think it's going to build up better as we go and just, and if this doesn't work, I want to include it in this video, but we're just going to go and go keep wrapping around the top of the wire and then just bring in the wire around on top of the other wire. If we can, as much as we can anyways, this is all a trial. I'm a beginner at this, like I said, so I'm going to keep it pretty loose because I want those wire to show. So, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to keep this top, coils pretty tight but what I don't want tight is this wire so I'm just going to keep on pulling it hoping that I can get it nice and tight like just on the top but not these wire I don't know if I'm explaining well what I'm trying to do but you know it's I'm just new at this so I can't expect to be amazing at this um I think what I care more about is this part than this part, to be honest. So even if they overlap, I just kind of want this part to look cool. And I want this one to look more like a bezel, maybe. Um, see, and this one kind of got too uh, bent for my taste. So I'm just going to try to straighten it up a little bit, if I can, as much as I can. Because um, I don't want it to have this kinked look. I'm trying to make a nice wrap here. Of course, as I said, I'm a beginner at this, so I'm not really great at it, but I keep trying. <laughs> and you know, honestly, the part that I care more about that is neat 
is actually this part. I don't mind if, you know, this looks a little bit less like wire on the sides. I don't mind if it looks a little bit less like wire. And I'm just going to keep doing it until I'm satisfied. So I'm going to keep wrapping like that and just bring in the wire around. And I did notice that it's getting a little kinked, so I just kind of have to keep straightening it up. And this might not the best be the best wire wrap ever, but that's okay. I mean, I'm just playing around and trying different things. I just like to try new stuff that I haven't tried before. I know there are people that are really good at this, and I'm not one of them because <laughs> I haven't really played with it much. But I think... I'm just going to maybe stop right there, maybe. Um, I think that's enough. I don't want it to be too, too wire lap rook. And uh, let me see what I need to do next because I'm kind of following a tutorial myself, sort of. So that's how it looks like in the front and that's the back. So we'll just have to remember. And I can also squish these if I feel like they're too, they're too far apart. I can probably squish them a little bit with some chain nose pliers. But I don't want them to be too squished either. Like I want them to show this spacing. I think that's really pretty. Um, so I'm pretty satisfied on how this looked like so far. Okay, so next I'm gonna secure this and I'm gonna just wrap it a couple of times. One and two, maybe even three times to make sure that it doesn't fall off just like that. And then I think I'm gonna be able to cut this. Okay, so hopefully this worked. I went ahead and wrapped it like I showed you, and then I kind of tucked it in to make sure it doesn't poke out too much. I actually slid the whole thing down to make it more centered. And now I'm just going to make some loops. So I'm just going to bend the wire right where this is. I use usually my fingers. And I do the same on the other side, um, just like that. I'm going to like do opposites, I think. Uh, hopefully I'm not doing it wrong, but um, just trim some of the thing off. I don't want to make too small a loop because I have to fit the leaf too and the other one. So I think these are about even. And then I'm going to take my pliers, my round nose plier, and I'm just going to make loops just like we would any loop, any wire loop, just like that. And then I'm going to do the same on this side and just make sure it's nice, round and tight and I bring it around. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that this is maybe a little bit straighter and keep closing it, but I don't want to close it too much because I still have to attach my leaf. So it looks like that. Okay. So then what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go ahead and attach to one of these ends. The leaf. I think I might do the bottom end because it's a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna open it just like a jump ring, like that. Gotta make sure that the leaf is facing to the front. I might have to open it a little bit more. Try not to open it too much because I don't want to form it, disform it, disfigure it. But you do have to get the leaf in there. So just do that and copper is very for you know a very soft so it tends to mar easily so be careful with that and then i'm going to attach it attach the other side to this and we're going to do it the same way i'm just going to open it up just like that i'm just going to slide it in hopefully it fits it looks like it might and then i'm just going to close it the way i came from very carefully, try not to mar the metal as much as we can. You can always polish the metal if you're concerned about that. But yeah, be very careful with copper. If you have some of these in, you know, uh, nylon, that might be best. So you don't. And it looks like my loop turned around a little bit, so I might have to straighten it up a little bit. But there you go. So that's how it looks like. I think it looks really pretty. So I still want to do one more thing, I think. Um, so it'll be front clasping just like that. It'll clasp on the front. Um, and it'll have this beautiful leaf. 
But I think another thing that I want to do, I want to add a little acorn. So I got this one from Tierra Cast recently. Um, and I decided to add it on. It's like a little, and this one was from the same mix, from the same Jesse J mix. It's just a nut bead. And if it's perfectly into that cup. So I just need to find a, a hat, hat pin and just attach it. So let me just go find that. Okay, from the same box, I got this little um, golden brassy glass bead and then this nut bead. And this one actually wasn't in the box. I just uh, got it recently. I thought about making earrings, but then I was like, you know what? I just don't want to. So I'm just going to use this. This is from Tierra Cast. It's from their new line. And uh, I'm just going to uh, probably just uh, close this up. I was thinking maybe putting a little bead on top, but I don't know if I like it. It's cute like that too, but I'm not sold on it. So uh, I might just keep it like that. I kind of wanted something to stop the um, thing a little better, but I'm not liking that either. So I'm just going to keep it pretty simple, just like that. I do have another uh, bead here that I was going to maybe attach. I'm thinking about it just to have an extra attachment there. So I want to attach this one, I think, directly. Uh, to this or I want to probably add a jump ring. So I'm probably going to add a jump ring and I'm going, this is a very thin kind of um, wire, a head pin. So I'm just going to wire wrap it, I think. So I'm just to wire wrap it. I'm just going to take this. I'm just going to wire wrap it like that and treat it as if it's just wire. So I'm just going to wrap it very carefully and tightly, do it at least a couple of rounds. And if I want the wrap to be tighter, I can always take my pliers and pull. And I think I might need to do a third wrap just to make it real tight and nice. Okay. So that's going to be... Maybe I'm going to flush cut it really close. And then tuck it in. So we don't have any pokies. Straighten this loop. So this one's ready. So I'm going to probably do that too. And then I, I think I'm going to add this one too. I want to do an extra dangle maybe since I only have one of these and I want to use it. And I have a different hat pin that has a little bit of a, a little bit of a thing here. I kind of wish I had a different bead cap. I have one here, but I don't think I like this with this. It's too big. So I'm just not going to use it. I'm just going to use this and I'm just going to, Probably why I wrap it as well, because this hat pin is pretty soft. Now, if the hat pin is soft, you can probably wire wrap it like I'm doing. But I'm just going to show you. If not, you can always just do just a loop wrap or just a loop, just like that. Like This is a loop. I decided to do a loop so I can show you. There's different ways to do a loop. This is one of them. You can start it as a wire wrap and then finish it up just like that, as long as it's neat. So I'm going to go and find a couple of jump rings and then attach these and then we'll be done and I can show you the necklace. Okay, so I got some jump rings. These are six millimeter brass jump rings that I had for a while. These are oxidized, so they're dark. Now I'm not too worried about the mix of metals because I like metals being mixed. So I don't mind using uh, brass with gold with, you know, um, copper. I just think it gives it a nice bohemian look to use different metals. So I'm going to open a jump ring and attach this. And then I just showed you, you know, to open a jump ring, I'll show you again. To close it, you just do this number. So you never pull jump rings apart. You always want to just gently open them and close them this way. So just take this and just open it like this. And you close it where you came from, like that, the other way too. Now don't do it too many times or the jump ring will break. Even if they're good soft jump rings, you still want to be careful. Okay, and then I'm going to add this one here, I think, on the other side. And open it enough, I don't think so. I might have to open it up a little bit more because this is a thick clasp. So you just add it and close it. And there you go. So we got our necklace made, and I think it's absolutely cute. Let me just kind of clean up. So let me just zoom you out and so you can kind of see it. Uh, I'm not going to put it completely round because um, it's not going to fit the frame, but you can get a good idea just by looking at it. Let me just kind of move the camera a little bit. There you go. 
So that's my necklace and I really love it. I might make a matching bracelet next. I don't have any more of these, so I won't be able to match it up with those, but I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Uh, I'll probably put it on my uh, mannequin and I'll show you guys the pictures in the end after the video. So I hope you like this kind of video. I know it's not an organized tutorial, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys uh, jewelry that maybe I don't do step by step on camera. Um, but kind of give you a step by step if that makes any sense. Sometimes teaching is not the easiest thing, especially when you don't have something ready to copy. Uh, and this is kind of like improvising. That's my kind of favorite jewelry to do is just improvising and combining elements and trying new things and or trying old things and recombine them in different ways. But if you like this video, just give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And, in, you know, just keep tuned for more tutorials, for more unboxings. And I thank you for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.